think it was only a couple months ago that I reviewed the Xiaomi Mi Note 10. That was the first smartphone to have a 108 megapixel smartphone sensor. Now, of course, Samsung also put a 108 megapixel smartphone sensor in its Galaxy S20 Ultra. But once the Mi Note 10 launched, everyone was kind of wondering, where's the Mi 10? Well, this is the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro. Now, of course, there's two versions of this phone, just like we've seen in pretty much all of 2020. But this phone packs some serious specs. Now, it's a little bit of a divergence from what Xiaomi has traditionally offered because the Mi 10 Pro starts at 999 euros. That's pretty much traditional flagship price, which is a little out of character for Xiaomi. But to be fair to Xiaomi, the Mi 10 Pro is packing some serious specs. It's got a Snapdragon 865 with sub 6 gigahertz 5G, a 4,500 million power battery with 65 watt wired charging. There's 30 watt wireless charging and 10 watt reverse wireless charging. There's also a 108 megapixel sensor here. There's two telephoto sensors and an ultra wide sensor. This is like every smartphone spec packed into one phone. Now, as soon as I picked up this phone, I could tell that it was a Xiaomi Mi device. They all have a really similar aesthetic and feel. It's got this nice soft touch glass on the back of the phone that really is just this standard matte color like you're going to see in a lot of Xiaomi devices. But the front is a little bit different than we're used to seeing on Xiaomi phones. The display of this phone is a 6.67 inch FHD plus panel, and it's just a little bit curved. There's also a front facing camera up in the notification tray area. And I personally like the cutout being there because it's about the same size as a notification, so it never really feels like it's getting in the way. The panel is also 90 hertz, so you're not getting the 120 hertz display that we've seen on a lot of other flagships this year, but I think that Xiaomi's probably trying to balance a good mix of battery life alongside that high refresh rate. Obviously 120 hertz is going to suck more battery than a 90 hertz display, so you kinda gotta choose your battles. And like I said, battery and power is kind of a big focus on this phone. It's got a 4,500 milliamp hour cell. And with that 65 watt charger, you can charge it in just over half an hour, which I love. I used the 65 watt charger on the Oppo Find X2 Pro, and it was probably one of my favorite features of that device. So it's really nice to see other manufacturers bringing super fast charging to their phones. Also supports 30 watt wireless charging, which is just awesome. The Mi 10 Pro also has 10 watt reverse wireless charging, which is really nice, because if you just need to charge like a pair of truly wireless headphones or maybe your friend's phone, sure, it's not gonna charge nearly as fast as like plugging it directly into the wall, but 10 watts is actually pretty quick for reverse wireless charging. Now the Mi Note 10 had a ton of cameras on the back of the phone. I called it the photographer Swiss army knife in my review. And that's pretty similar here as well. You're getting that 108 megapixel sensor that's going to bin down to get you a little bit more light and clarity. And you're actually getting two telephoto sensors on this phone. The first telephoto lens in this phone is a 50 millimeter equivalent and it shoots at 12 megapixels. Now, Xiaomi says that they really kind of want people to use this lens for portraits. And 50 millimeters is kind of the standard focal length. A lot of people will use 50 or maybe up to about 80 for portraiture on regular DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. So Xiaomi wanted to put a second telephoto lens in here just for that. They've also got another telephoto lens that shoots at a focal length of 94 millimeter equivalent, and that is an eight megapixel sensor. You're also gonna find a 20 megapixel ultra wide sensor on this phone, and you've got a 20 megapixel selfie camera on the front. So far, photo quality looks pretty good on this phone. Now, DxMark did score it as a very, very, very high rated phone. And during my small amount of testing time with it, it did look like it had very good dynamic range. So we're excited to test that later once we do a full review. And of course, we have to mention that this phone uses the X55 modem from Qualcomm, so it is a 5G phone. And I personally wouldn't go out right now looking for only 5G phones, but most flagship phones that are being made in 2020 are 5G. So that's just kind of a benefit that you're gonna get for the future. The Mi 10 Pro has also got eight to 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 to 512 gigabytes of storage. So it's pretty much a proper 2020 flagship. Now Xiaomi's Mi UI is kind of polarizing for a lot of people. I didn't really like it on the Xiaomi Mi Note 10, but they have updated it to Android 10 on the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro. So it's a little more streamlined and something that I actually really liked seeing was the fact that they're using a ton of Google apps as their stock apps. You've got things like Android Messages being the default texting app. You've got Google Pay and Google Podcasts and Google One. There's a ton of Google apps on this phone built in, which is not something that we're used to seeing on Xiaomi phones. 
Now, of course, there are a lot of other bloatware apps like Facebook and some weird games, but you're gonna get that on a lot of phones. And of course, Xiaomi does have its own versions of some apps as well. And there you have it, that's the Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro. So let me know what you guys think about this phone. The 999 euro starting price is pretty dang expensive, especially for a Xiaomi device. But of course, if you wanted to get the regular Xiaomi Mi 10, that is starting at 799 euros if you wanna cut down just a little bit. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Stay tuned to the review and stay tuned for all the other content we've got coming at you very soon. So I'll catch you in the next video.